My wife and I were watching the Peanuts Christmas special the other day, and there's that scene where everybody's dancing, and there's this one kid dancing that always makes me laugh. And I was thinking, I wonder how they animated that. Specifically, like, how many frames did that take? Because it's fairly simple looking animation, but the animation, the action in it, it always makes me laugh. And so I thought, why don't I try and do that myself? So I went ahead and animated my own character doing this dance. So I'm going to talk about the process of how I actually animated this and the process that I used on today's episode of the Expat Animator. So here's my file in Rough Animator, and the, the I'll go ahead and hit play real quick here. And you can see this is the actual file that I just showed you. And this animation is pretty simple, just cycling back and forth. So let's take a look at how I did this. Uh, let's go ahead and zoom in here on the timeline. And we can count out here. So here's frame one that I'm holding for three frames. Uh, and then I'm just going to flip through here. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. And that's the full animation, and it just cycles from there. Now, how did I do this? So let's take a look here. I'm going to go look at some of my other layers here. And what I did is I went on the internet and just found a GIF of the actual. Peanuts character dancing. So I could actually play this and let me just set my playback end frame here to 39 and then I'll hit play. So this is what I used for reference. So I just took that GIF and I it pulled out all of the images from it and brought those in as individual frames into the rough animator program. And then what I had to do is I had to bring each drawing to hold for three frames so you know you can do that here in the drawing duration and you can see it's pretty pixelated because it was a gif but what I did was I basically just went to modify layers and then I duplicated the layer timing to blank drawings when I click that it creates a new layer on top with blank images to draw in and so what I did was I just let me pull the let me pull the uh, opacity up and I'll pull this one down so we can see a little bit. And then I just took my brush tool and kind of traced the basic shapes on top of the drawing here. So you can kind of see, uh, let, me, let me drop the background out and see this a little bit better. So you can kind of see, I'm just drawing a circle for the head and a reference for where the nose is. And, you know, some basic shapes for where the main body parts of the legs, the arms, the hands, and the feet are. And then once I had that, I went and I took that layer and I actually duplicated that layer to blank drawings again. And that gave me this layer, which I called roughs. So let me get rid of the original peanuts guy. So this is what we've got here. Let me just play this real quick. So you can see here, the animation is playing pretty well with just those three, 13 drawings. But then I needed to clean up this with my own character shapes. And because my character's head's not a perfect circle like this and and the arms and the legs, they're proportionally pretty similar, but I want to do my own drawing for the body. So let's bring that up here on the roughs. And notice I'm not doing, I'm not drawing the head at this stage yet because uh, I like to do my head animations on its own layer. So but using that blue lane, that blue line as a guide, I can kind of sketch in my own character's body at this point. So let's go ahead and play that. And now if we take the uh, shapes layer out and just, just show the body here, let's quickly play that. So we're getting pretty close here. And then the next stage I wanted to add the head. So that layer actually turned into my final layer here. But what I would do is let's go ahead and do this. I'll just duplicate to the layer timing to blank drawings one more time. And so now it's giving me these blank images here. And on these, this is where I would have my head layer. 
and then I would draw my head. And if you want, you can bring up that original blue line to give you an idea of where your drawing needs to go. So I would draw my head here a couple of times. And what I did was I only, if you look at the head drawings here, you've got this one and this one are basically the same drawing, but with a little bit of tilt down, same drawing, same drawing for the most part. And then I needed a new head drawing here because it's at a different angle and you're kind of looking up at the face. And then I think I had a third drawing here. And then I think I may have used the original drawing, just flipped it for these final drawings. So I think I may have only used three or four head drawings and just copied and pasted them throughout. So let's go ahead and bring up my final drawing here and I'll flip through this. So we've got head one here, same drawing on the head, same drawing on the head, but I'm kind of moving it in sync with that blue reference line below it. Same head, okay, there's a new drawing. Then we go back to our original drawing and then here, this is, if you look at the difference, there's, that's my third drawing of the head here. So I've got the original head just flipped and then I've got a new drawing here, which is kind of the profile of the, of the head. And then I just kind of take that drawing and tilt it a little bit, bounce it up and down where it needs to go. Do a little back to the original head here on the rotate, uh, back to that upper shot and then back down to the original post. So really I only did three head drawings and just copied and pasted and moved them around. And I like that uh, technique because it gives me more of a consistent look between my heads because I have a, I have a tendency to draw my heads at different sizes from drawing to drawing. And then I, you kind of get this head going big to small in your animation. So it looks kind of weird. So that's kind of a trick that I came up with. Now, once I had the head drawn, then it, I went in to do my coloring stage. So I took this head layer here with the head drawings on them and I colored the heads first and then I merged it with this layer below with the rough bodies. And then what you end up with is this layer here. So now I've got everything on one layer, the head, the body, they're all colored. And you know, we've got 13 frames here and that's my final animation. But once we get to the final frame here, it needs to cycle around again to the start. And so that's when we add a drawing after here and then create our cycle. And if you've never seen, if you're not familiar with how to create a cycle, I've got videos on that exact feature here and I'll link that up in the description. But say this was the final drawing here, I would add one more, have that selected and then you come up here and hit the make cycle and then you can extend your cycle from there. So I'm just gonna undo that a little bit here. And so if I zoom out here, I went ahead and I had the cycle all the way for a whole minute because I wanted that to be my final export of him bouncing, dancing around for a minute straight. So I just went ahead and created 1,404 frames to give me that exact number here in my timeline and then exported that out. So that's the process that I used and I like to use my uh, background as that green screen green so that I can just knock that out in my Final Cut Pro editing software. So I can superimpose this animation on top of any video that I want. And if you're familiar with my last video, uh, we noticed that Rough Animator went up to 2.09 and that so far has, hasn't had any issues for me yet, but I noticed that if you hit check for updates here, there's a new 2.10 out already. And it just looks like it's got a bug fix to fix a uh, failure to import some audio files. So if you were having any issues in 2.09 with, with the audio files, you probably want to update to 2.10. So I'm probably going to do that next, but um, didn't want to make a whole video about 2.10. So I just thought I'd throw that here in at the end of the video. If you've got your own characters, maybe now uh, you can make your own character do this fun animated dance from the classic Peanuts characters Christmas special. I've been having a lot of fun working on this project and using the final animated piece in some videos that I'm messing around with. So I bet you could have some fun with yours too.
That's about it for today's video. My name is Patrick Davidson. This has been another episode of the Expat Animator. Thanks for joining me today, and I hope to see you next time, and Merry Christmas. If you found today's video helpful, you might like some of my animation classes over at Skillshare.com. I'll put the link in the description below.